In the last PowerPoint, we showed how you could determine if a reaction was spontaneous or not by calculating the entropy change of the universe. That calculation relied upon knowing what the entropy changes and enthalpy changes were for the reaction, or delta S system and delta H system. In this PowerPoint, we'll review how you can use standard thermodynamic values found in reference tables to calculate those entropy and enthalpy changes for any system. Before we introduce these standard values, we do need to discuss the third law of thermodynamics. Remember that the first law was the law of conservation of energy. The second law stated that spontaneous processes increase the entropy of the universe. The third law gives us the basis for determining entropy values for any substance. It states that the entropy of a perfectly crystalline solid that possesses no kinetic energy, in other words, at absolute zero, its entropy is zero. So at zero Kelvin, the particles that make up the solid are not moving at all. And this means there's only one possible location for each particle. And the crystal is defined by a single microstate. This results in an entropy value of zero. Now absolute zero is a theoretical temperature. In reality, you'll never have a solid in which the particles aren't vibrating in place at all. But this theoretical concept provides us with a reference point against which we can calculate the entropies of different substances at other temperatures. Careful calorimetric measurements can be used to determine how a substance's enthalpy changes with respect to temperature. And therefore, we can calculate its entropy at a variety of temperatures. This is the basis of the standard entropy values that can be found in a wide variety of reference tables. Standard absolute entropies are one of the thermodynamic values that can be found in reference tables in the back of any general chemistry textbook. You can also find them online. They're represented by a capital S with a degree sign following them. The degree sign indicates that these measurements apply to standard thermodynamic conventions. So in other words, the standard absolute entropies are appropriate for 25 degrees Celsius or 298 Kelvin for the temperature. It's assumed that all gases listed have a pressure of one atmosphere. Any liquids or solids are in their most stable form. For example, the standard absolute entropy listing for solid carbon is assumed to be for graphite, not for the diamond form of carbon. And finally, any solutions listed have a concentration of one mole per liter. Here we have a few examples of some of the standard absolute entropies you might find in a reference table. For example, we have liquid and gaseous water. Liquid water has a standard absolute entropy of 70 joules per mole Kelvin. Gaseous water, 188.8 joules per mole Kelvin. As you might expect, the gas phase has a higher absolute entropy value, reflecting a greater dispersal of matter and energy. You'll also find solids and solutions on the table. This is a comparison of the standard entropy values for solid potassium chlorate and a solution of potassium chlorate dissolved in water, AQ. As you might expect, the entropy of the solution is higher as the particles are more dispersed. So these standard absolute entropies can be used to calculate the change in entropy at standard conditions for any chemical process. The change in entropy, or delta S system, which is the same as delta S reaction, is simply the sum of the absolute entropies of the products times their molar coefficients from the balanced chemical equation. So that's represented by the N here. We subtract from this sum of products the sum of the absolute entropies of the reactants times their molar coefficients from the balanced chemical equation. There's a degree sign on our delta S term because we're using standard absolute entropies. So those standard thermodynamic conditions carry over to the change in entropy for our process.
Let's look at an example of this calculation, and let's calculate the standard change in entropy for the decomposition of hydrogen peroxide, H2O2, into gaseous water and oxygen gas. The first thing to do is to look up the absolute entropy values in a thermodynamic reference table. So I've looked up each reactant and product listed in the table at the back of your textbook, and here are the values that I found. It's important when you look these up that you get the correct phase. For example, you'll find the absolute entropies of water in all three phases, solid, liquid, and gas, in that table. You need to make sure that you've picked the correct absolute entropy for the phase that occurs in your chemical reaction. So this process has gaseous water as its product, so I picked the uh, absolute entropy that goes with gaseous water. As part of our calculation, we also have to take into account if we have more than one mole reacting according to the balanced chemical equation. So this means any coefficients from the equation have to be multiplied by the appropriate standard absolute entropy. For example, in our first term here, we have the sum of the absolute entropies of our products, gaseous water, 188.8, and gaseous oxygen. Multiplied by both of these absolute entropies, we have the actual coefficients straight from the balanced chemical equation. So there's a two coefficient on water, so two times 188.8, plus uh, an assumed one coefficient on the oxygen gas, so one times 205.2 for the absolute entropy of oxygen. This sum is in brackets to indicate that the addition has to be done first. From the sum of our products, we subtract our second term, which is the sum of our reactants. And we actually only have one uh, type of reactant here. It's the H2O2 gas. We have two uh, moles of H2O2 gas reacting according to our balanced chemical equation, so we multiply the absolute entropy by two in our second term. Now we can enter this calculation straight into our calculator. Just remember when you're doing so to uh, use brackets or do the sums first and then do the subtraction. When we do that, we get 117.4 joules per mole Kelvin. So this is a positive change in entropy, which indicates that entropy increases from our reactants to our products. And indeed, if we look at the balanced chemical equation, we can predict that the products are going to be more dispersed. We go from two moles of gas, hydrogen peroxide, with the reactants to three moles total, so more gas particles, between water and oxygen gas on the product side. So there will be a greater dispersal of matter, more microstates possible for the products than for the reactants. And we see that reflected in the value that we calculate for our standard absolute entropy change. So this calculation tells us the change in entropy, delta S, of the chemical system. It doesn't necessarily tell us whether the reaction is spontaneous or not, though. In order to answer this question, we need to calculate the entropy change of the universe and that means we also need to find out what the entropy change of the surroundings are. So we know that the entropy change of the surroundings is equal to the negative of the enthalpy change, delta H, of our system divided by the temperature in Kelvin. So before we can predict whether this process is spontaneous at standard conditions or not, we have to calculate the enthalpy change associated with our system. In the first semester of general chemistry, you actually learned how to calculate the enthalpy change of a reaction using tabulated standard thermodynamic values as well. It turns out that those reference tables that show absolute standard entropy have another column that displays the standard enthalpies of formation for each of those substances in units of kilojoules per mole. And we can calculate the enthalpy change for any reaction using those standard enthalpies of formation. The equation is very similar to our calculation for uh, the standard entropy change. It is simply the sum of 
the standard enthalpy of formation of all of the products in the reaction times the molar coefficient of those products from the balanced chemical equation. From this term, we subtract the sum of all of the enthalpy of formations of the reactants in the process times their molar coefficients from the balanced chemical equation. So let's calculate the enthalpy change for the decomposition of hydrogen peroxide. First, we use the same reference tables to look up the standard enthalpies of formation for each of our reactants and products. So these are delta H values, not S, and the units are different. They are kilojoules per mole instead of joules per mole Kelvin. We're going to do the same basic calculation as we did for absolute entropy, though. And we'll take each of these enthalpy of formations and multiply them by their molar coefficient from the balanced chemical equation. Our first term will represent the sum of our products, water and oxygen gas. So the standard enthalpy of formation of oxygen gas is zero. This is because it is an element in its most stable form. So the enthalpy of formation of all elements in their stable forms is, it's always zero. We subtract from our products our reactant term. And again, we only have the one reactant, that's hydrogen peroxide multiplied by two, its molar coefficient from the chemical equation. We plug these values into our calculator and we get negative 211.0 kilojoules per mole for the standard enthalpy associated with this process. And the negative value we know indicates that this is an exothermic reaction. Now we can use our calculated values for the entropy change and enthalpy change of our system to determine if the decomposition of hydrogen peroxide is spontaneous at 298 Kelvin or 25 degrees Celsius. We do need to make sure everything is in the same basic unit. So our entropy is in units of joules per mole Kelvin. We'll use that as our basis and convert our enthalpy delta H from kilojoules per mole into joules per mole. So we multiply by 1000. We also need to make sure our temperature is in units of Kelvin, so we add 273.15 to 25 degrees Celsius. And now we can substitute everything into our equation for the entropy change of the universe. Remember that we take the negative of our enthalpy, which is negative for this process. So the negative of a negative is going to give us a positive overall. And 211 times 10 to the third divided by 298.15 gives us a value uh, for our second term of 707.7 .7 joules per mole Kelvin. We can add that to our entropy change of our system, and we get a total value for the entropy change of the universe of 825.1 joules per mole Kelvin. So this is a positive value. The entropy of the universe increases at 25 degrees Celsius for the decomposition of hydrogen peroxide. This is a spontaneous process at 25 degrees Celsius. In summary, standard thermodynamic reference values for absolute standard entropies and the enthalpies of formation can be used to calculate the values of delta S system and delta H system that are necessary to determine whether a reaction is spontaneous or not.